I'm really excited to be kicking things off with my presentation on grip mode. Uh, my name is Sky Cannabis, by the way, and this is my project. It's called Grip Mode, and this is a new lifestyle publication for the smart, sporty, and stylish woman. And my own, and really, I like to think of it as an outside magazine for women, and focusing more on fashion and active wear kind of as a future of style and sports and empowering women to lead active and healthy lifestyles. Um, my own background, this is me um, in one of my various guises. Um, before coming to Tao Night, I was a corporate lawyer turned journalist. I reported for the Wall Street Journal in Hong Kong and Beijing for a number of years. And throughout those careers as a lawyer and reporter, which can be quite stressful with long days in the office, I started becoming more active um, and running especially. And I really started to develop an appreciation for running and active lifestyle and the outdoors. And so when I looked at media, I haven't found that much that really speaks to me as, a, as an active woman who is not really concerned with things like um, losing weight or getting a bikini body. And I find this is a state of a lot of women's uh, health and fitness media today. Even, even the new entrants in the digital world are still kind of casting a very wide net, which is also kind of superficial. So I wanted to start something for the women I know, and my market research has held this up. So like, I don't know that woman, but I know Kat, she's an ER nurse, and this is her in Utah, which is like her favorite place in the world. And I know Lisa, who's a young advertising executive, who loves to run ultra marathons and marathons almost every weekend. And there are so many more women like this, not just in the US, but around the world. And Grip Mode aims to reach them and help them. Um, market opportunities that I've seen. So women's activewear, not including footwear and accessories, just clothing is like a $12 billion industry already. We've seen the huge rise of brands like Lululemon and other brands like Gap Sasleta that are copying this. Um, trend. Wearable devices are growing very rapidly and I think will reach more and more women. Um, just as a figure um, that I can throw out there, there are 10 million women who are into running enough that they're doing races each year. And we're also seeing the success of a number of niche lifestyle publications. I've mentioned Outside Magazine, which is really targeted more towards men. Um, there are new magazines like Modern Farmer, which targets modern interest in getting back to nature, kind of um, slow food movement. So this would be targeting kind of a similar niche, but active women who are serious about what they do and want to look good while they do it. Um, initial revenue will be a mix of advertising as well as affiliate marketing. And because it will be primarily a digital publication, we can include links to products that we, that we highlight editorially and say, well, you can buy it here. This is something that traditional print media models have been very slow to capitalize on. And even new media um, around health and fitness has not really pushed this. Um, when we put, roll out a print component, we could add uh, subscriptions as well as a revenue source. Um, future sources of revenue could include partners with partnerships with brands, working as a content agency. Um, creating grit mode branded merchandise, working with, with partners on events, possibly centered around running race events um, or travel and tourism, creating an ad network because there's a very active community of women who are writing about health and fitness and I'd like to reach them as well as possibly industry intelligence, uh, working with brands to improve their offerings and to reach the women that they're trying to get to. Uh, marketing campaign, uh, social media promotion. As I've mentioned, there is a very active community of women who are into health and fitness. Um, partnering with some of these contributors as well. Uh, would do paid advertising, for example, Google ads and contests and giveaways, to, which is a really kind of low cost way to get more people engaged. Um, this is a prototype of the site. As it is now, I'm preparing a summer issue and lining up contributors to work on photo spreads and fashion um, spreads on the site as well. And what I'm looking for now are potentially advisors or partners who have experience in fashion 
and lifestyle publications. And this is a URL, and I can be reached at skycannabis at gmail.com. And now we'll have some quest time for questions from the audience. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, well, since I moved back to New York last year, I've become very active in the running community. So I know a lot of people in this community, and I've reached out to different groups, um, running clubs, as well as online communities, like on Facebook and Twitter, that are very active, as well as bloggers who are involved in this space. Yes, uh, yes, Noah? Uh, I think for medicine, that potential, I, mean, I think it's a really smart idea. What I, what I don't think we really got enough of um, is what the actual publication is. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got the revenue projection, or the revenue ideas. We got um, you know what, a sense of what it isn't. Mm -hmm. But I want to know like what are the types of stories you're going to be telling? Um, maybe even do a sample, you know, photo essay or whatever. Of one person that whose story you think really needs to be told. Uh, kind of give us a sense because then everything else is sort of oh, okay. Like the domino will fall into place when we have a sense of like how cool this thing is actually going to be. Because we, we kind of got a teaser of it with a screenshot. Yeah. But that was really that was like toward the end. Yeah. And that's what I'm working on now, putting together a photo shoot and photo spreads. Yeah, Paul. You're also going to have like a service element if you want to sign up for a race or a local race. I mean, are you going to be able to use it as a resource if you're a runner and you just moved yeah, to New York? Yeah, I would like to do that. And that would, be, that would be a later stage offering. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think that it's a really good idea. Here's my question. I would have liked to have seen in this presentation, if you have it, uh, proof that, uh, that the women who this is for want this or need this. How, do you have any sense of that? And if so? Yeah, I've conducted market research. And there have been also a couple of notable cases of backlash against mainstream fitness media in just in recent months. One involved a case where uh, Shape magazine asked women to submit pictures of themselves before and after, and a woman who had lost a lot of weight and her abs did not look like a six-pack um, was rejected. And they said they don't post photos of women in their bikinis, and they, did actually, they had actually done that. And there was a big social media backlash around this, around the magazine's response. And there have been other cases in, in recent months and, and my market research has also borne out that the women I've, I've talked to have not found that the current media really serves their needs. Yeah, I would just say, and that I think it was Noah who made this point, in addition to wanting to see a little more affirmatively what will be in it, not what will not be in it, it would be good. I think your presentation would be stronger if you could include some information about the market research you've done and not just what women don't want, but do they affirmatively want what you are building? I think on the, oh sorry, um, I think on the product uh, roadmap side, um, I, I worked a little bit with Sky over the semester, and she has a lot more depth in here. That the, and so I agree with the panelists that um, to put a little bit more flesh around the bones on the on the uh, on the presentation would be good um, because I think this is a very good idea. I love the brand and the tagline. One more question. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's your revenue opportunity as you think about it? You, you scoped out the size of the market, mm -hmm. but when and how and how much revenue so do you expect? The, the projections I've done on the optimistic side would be revenues of about up to around half a million a year within the first two years by the end of the second year, um, maybe, and considerably less in the first year. But that's, that's a somewhat modest market projection.